Hello guys, uh, Striker here, and today we're going to be watching a spawn match between Pitbull and Ruin. Pitbull is a semi-pro Zerg who is friends with Soma and apparently played a very important role in developing the ZVT 2-hatch muta style that's become very trendy as of late. Um, along with Soma, he's considered one of the strongest amateur Zergs in the scene today. Ruin, on the other hand, is a former pro gamer who used to be an STX soul and is friends with Mini. Since his discharge from the military, he's been working as a Brood War streamer. So let's get started. Our first game is on Neo Sophid. And we have our Zerg player at 7 o'clock and our Protoss player at 5. Sophid is a very popular map. A three-player map, and it's currently in the ladder rotation. And it's it, it's a generally a macro heavy map, and so we will see how the game plays out in this game. Pitbull sending his overlord towards the direction of the Protoss, so this will be a good first search for him. And in the, on the other hand, Protoss, uh, we'll see uh, what he does with his first uh, pylon. Uh, likely we'll make it at a snat and transition into a standard uh, two base opening, a fast expand. And so we see this probe making a pylon, okay. And okay, waiting around, which means that he'll likely open gateway here. Uh, whether it's two gate or one gate, we'll see, but there's probably going to be a gateway placed right over here. On the other hand, uh, on the Zerg side, we see that an overlord has been started, so not, not a nine pool. Uh, Popular openings on this map include Overpool, you know, 12 hatch. And let's see if he makes a pool with this drone. And indeed he does, right, where uh, the optimized mining can be made uh, from this mineral patch. And the Overlord is not going to see uh, Ruin. And Ruin is not able to see the Overlord, but he scouts in the right direction. And he's going to be able to see that the over uh, the Zerg open overpool. Zerg sending out a drone in order to do a, a second hatchery. Ooh, gets gets to see the probe and knows uh, what's coming for him, which is a lot of harassment and un inability to put down a hatchery. Probe dancing around, preventing the Zerg from putting down a hatch. And oof, Pitbull opting to take a second drone out for a potential uh, second hatchery elsewhere. Pro being super annoying at this point. Just really just taking damage and trying to prevent the drone from placing a hatchery. But drone doing a fairly, ooh, and a one block. A second block? Ah, uh, finally gets to put down a hatchery. Not terrible. First zealot on its way. Probe is going to be, oh, and he sees two lings popping out. So, oh, and the, and the lings just go straight out of the base. Probe trying to do some harass. It's going to be anxiously waiting to see what pops out of the seg here. Okay, two more lings. Protoss chooses to play more defensively and turns around. Now these lings want to get into the main and the Protoss has to prevent that from happening. It's Probe and the Zealot forming a wall here. Another Zealot on the way. And in the meantime, more lings are coming. And these two lings hitting the Nexus, trying to get some damage, some free damage off here. Running around, avoiding the Zalat. Two more lings joining here. I think more of his friends are going to be coming here, so the Protoss in a tricky position here. He might take some damage here, and maybe even let some lings in if he's not careful. A third Zalat out, trying to help out. Oh, cornering these lings! Oof. Lings slipping out. Oh, Pro coming out, building a forge here. Well, well placed. Lings pounding at the gateway. Gateway taking a decent amount of damage. Oh, and the Lings coming in. Taking out the probe. And oh, runs in. Three Lings into the main of the Protoss. And at the same time, getting harassed in the front. Four Lings in the net. And three Lings in the main. Protoss not happy about this uh, infiltration here. He's going to want to put down a, a cannon as soon as possible to prevent any more run buys. In the meantime, Zerg, having gone speed first has taken all the drones off of gas. Zealot's coming out to do a little poke. Oh, Zerg unable to see what's going on. Loses a few there. 
Oh, getting some harass. Ah, loses a, a Zergling. How many kills does this guy have? Currently one kill from that opening probe. Now has speed, so should be able to do a little... Oh, gets a probe! Two kills so far, two probe kills. Cannon's almost finishing, and, is, and a decent number of Zealots. Things. Oh, getting another probe. Very nice. That's three probes. And it looks like that's going to be the extent of the damage here. He has one dr one Ling here. Probably unable to do that much more. And on the other hand, ooh, Zerg. Opting to build a Hydralisk den and putting gas back. Timing-wise, I'm not really sure about this because the there's a lot of Zealots as it stands. And it's and the cybernetics core is uh, already done, so we'll see how this works out. Clearly, the Protoss doesn't know yet it's a den, um, so we'll see how this game plays out. Zealot, six Zealots at the mat of the Protoss, a decent number, but also 12 Lings with speed waiting to ambush them. Uh, zealots poking out to see where the Lings are. Oh, they might get caught by these things. They need to be very careful. Oh my god. Oh, one Zealot gets trapped by the Lings. Very well done. Free pick off by Pitbull. In the meantime, a Stargate going up. Protoss still in the dark on exactly what the Zerg is doing. Adds a safety cannon. Plus one is on the way. In the meantime, Zerg is upgrading Hydralisks. Movement speed. Not going layer, not adding hatcheries. And so we should be seeing some Hydras coming out here. Uh, this is, in some sense, a variation of the 973 build. So this is 97 and 4, actually. So it's sort of a macro-oriented Hydra opening. Ooh, and six Zealots coming out to poke. Very nice timing, forcing the Zerglings to run, run around. And preventing the Zerg from just droning up as much as he'd like to. But he's going Hydras anyway, so... Uh, which the Protoss doesn't yet know. But... Okay, Lings... Uh, 12 lings still outside of the base. Zealot's going back home. Protoss is now just about to finish the Citadel of the Dune. And, oh, with with his Scourge, scouts the, the Hydra's coming in. He's going to have to put down some cannons immediately. And he does. He adds one. He adds two cannons. Continuing to pump Zealots. He's able to scout the Zerg base. He knows that there's no lair yet. He might need more cannons than this right now. This, uh... I assume he's going to have 12 Hydras. Oh, he doesn't want to lose his Overlord. Pokes that with a Zealot at the same time. He has to be careful, though. He doesn't want to be ambushed here. Oh my god, he's going to get trapped. Oh my god, two Zealots being trapped. Oh, and Ling's back off. And Zealots run to safety. Zealot leg speed, a third of the way done. Uh, losing an Overlord here. Making him supply blocked. And in the meantime, Zerg adding two more hatcheries. Completing his sort of macro style Hydra opening here. But uh, I don't know, this, and, and uh, oh nice. Protoss noticing that there's more Hydras on the way. Ops to build more cannons. And this is a big investment because each of these cannons could have been a gateway. So you wanna be sure that it's worth building. And in this case, he would be right because there's a lot of Hydras in the net, takes out one cannon, attacking, and takes out the second cannon, probes being drilled to prevent the Hydras from doing more damage. Oh my god, a few probes being lost, but Hydras still pounding on the gateway and the forge. It looks like he's going to lose his gateway, but he already has plus one, so he's not going to feel too bad about the forge going down. Uh, Hydra, oh, dying to a cannon shot here, uh, which is unfortunate. Uh, Zealot Lex is done. And he's going to just come out. And the Hydras aren't moving. Get surrounded by the Zealots. Oh my goodness. A slight misstep by Pitbull. Loses all of his Hydras. And 12 Zealots with speed are just going to stream into the Zerg base. This is not looking good for the Zerg player right now. Uh, frantically adding a creep colony at his net. And he should be adding one at his third, if not more. 12 Zealots is going to be way too much for him to handle right now. Zealots running into the net. Okay, he sees a sunken being morphed. Oh, and drone drill. So that pushes away the, the Zealots. So the net is safe for now. 
And he's about to go through the net. Could go through the third though. There's nothing at the third but two hydras and a and a and a creep colony that just is moving. So this is oh, this is not gonna end well for the third right now. Nine drones to start. Already lost two. Oh, these zealots should have been hitting that tree. Uh, hydras coming in to help, but there's just not enough hydras here. This is there's more zealots than there are hydras. The hydras trying to be microed and moving back and trying to split the damage, but unable to really do so effectively. Drone count dwindling down. Hydra still getting pounded. Down to two drones, one drone. Oh, and loses the last drone at a third and still has some zealots moving. We are remaining. I think we'll be able to clean this up, but this is just too much damage. Oh, and these extra drones aren't going to help in this fight. Hydra's being caught by three speed bots. And again, zealots, they're going to be cleaned up, but this is just a lot of damage to be taken at this point in the game. Ooh. Follow-up Zealots being added here. And still not enough Hydras. Oh, and a Dark Templar just icing on the cake here. DT just... Oh, and a GG by Pippin. Ending the game in a very fast and spectacular fashion. Uh, Ruin is up 1-0. And we're off to the second game, which is also on Sylphid. Now, I promise you it's a different game. And we know because the colors are different. So let's get started. So yeah, I have to say last game, I really enjoyed the, the aggressive and decisive move by Ruin to add a bunch of gateways there and just move out with 12 zealots when the hydras were just kind of chilling out in front of the, the protoss base and you know i think that was a very appropriate response to like the 973-ish macro hydra opening uh, i think it's either that or like a, a reaver opening but yeah ruin just decisively added a bunch of gateways attacked and got the upper hand in that battle and just kind of steamrolled the the zerg afterwards so I think Ruin is going to feel pretty confident about his Zealot Micro. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes a gateway first opening again. And yeah, indeed it looks like he's going to build a gateway after uh, in the same position as last game too, actually. Uh, so let's see what, what Pitbull does in this game. Looks like he's opening with the Overlord first. Uh, we'll see if he adds um, a pool or a hatchery this time. Um, but yes, as we can see, Ruin adding a, a gateway here. Again, they're going to miss each other, but they're also going to still scout each other first. So uh, not much of a difference from last game, really. Uh, and here we have our first difference, which is that Pitbull is deciding to open, it looks like 11 hatch, not utilizing this larva here. And the benefit of going 11 hatch is that against a gate first opening, you can build your hatchery before the probe gets to your base. So none of the, you know, shenanigans and preventing the, uh, the hatchery from being placed. So nice, uh, nice start for Pitbull. I would say that this opening is favorable for Pitbull. And oof, pool, oh, denied a second time, a third time, oh my god, a fourth time. Oh, Ruin buying himself four seconds or so in a delayed pool, which means delayed lings. And his zealot is just about to morph here. Just to pop out and start running as fast as he can. Being annoying with this probe, getting some damage. Pitbull, drone coming to stop the zealot, preventing him from moving. Very nicely done. Buying maybe a second or two that he, that he would need to prevent the Zealot from coming into his main. Oh, and in the meantime, uh, Drone almost being killed by this probe. Probe darting in and out, doing damage, just being a nuisance. Uh, in the meantime, Nexus is up, no further Zealots. Forge going up. Uh, a, a decent a decent decision given that the hatchery is fast, which means a good larva and, and, and a good number of links. Oh, and, and this is now the important point where we Protoss wants to do as much damage as possible here. Uh, 11 hatch being a macro rip. Oh, okay. Drone drill. Nicely done. Okay. Oh, probe taken out. 
Oh, and the drone escaping. Very nicely done. Oh, he might get this one though. Ah, uh, one kill from the zealot. Uh, not bad, but... Oh, can he block it? Nope, unable to block. Not bad. I think he would want to get at least one more kill to feel pretty good about this exchange here. But it looks like he's not going to be able to get any more. And... Yep, a second zealot being... Uh, uh, walking over, but now decides to turn back. Oh, but actually, diverts his way up. And I like this, because usually you don't really know exactly how many zealots he built, and so you're not going to expect the zealot to come at you. And right now, uh, he is sending all of his links to the Protoss Nat, so when the zealot hits, it could actually do some damage here. Hmm. Pitbull. Still no idea that the Zealot is about to come. Now sees it in vision, but <laughs> he's been caught with his pants down. Uh, he, he's been morphing drones all this time, trying to build up his economy, and now he's having to dr 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 drone drill them. Zealot making it past. Ooh, and all of the links having to come back home. Zealot, let's see if we can get more than one kill this time. Ooh, one drone. Ooh, nice uh, dodge. And another nice dodge. <laughs> and this time, able to block the Zealot with the drone. But the Protoss also was able to get valuable scouting information. So, you know, not all is lost here. He did see that there's no hot uh, layer. He did see that there's no den. Uh, so likely he should expect a macro opening from the Zerg, uh, adding maybe a fourth hatchery here and then a den, or a fifth hatchery and then a den. In the meantime, Protoss putting pressure on the map. Sees the links. Okay, says hi. Oh, and then engages. Micro battle. Nine links versus three locks. Oh, and the links. Oh, finally getting a guy. Another one. Oh, one more. Two more hits. Oh. And left with one zealot and one link. Pretty even battle there. And, and Zerg, indeed, opting to go for a macro style. Uh, not going for tech. Adds a Hydra then after adding a Hatchery. In the meantime, uh, Stargate uh, about to pump out a Corsair. And this will allow the Protoss to know exactly what he's facing. Zerg so continuing to drone up. Uh, makes a bunch more Lings. So let's see how many Lings he has right now. He has... Okay, this is just from before. So he has about... Oh yeah, he did make some more links because he lost them. So he has about seven links total right now. Uh, Protoss is going to add a few more gateways, it looks like. Started leg, leg, uh, leg speed. Zerg adding a fifth hatchery. Finally going layer. And has a Hydra out to counter the Corsair harass. Four zealots walking out, apply some more pressure. Now, the Zerg, is he going to be forced into making more lings? We'll see. Protoss, this is a bluff for the Protoss. Protoss doesn't actually want to go all the way, or does he? And that's what the Zerg is wondering too. Okay, so the Zerg, uh, the Protoss starts walking back, and it looks like the Zerg did not fall for his, uh, his bluff because he's making all drones here. Oh, but look at this. Three extra gateways. And leg speed almost done now. I think this is the great mind game that the Protoss player is trying to play here. You want to make it look like you're, you're bluffing, but actually one of these days it's going to be an actual push. And look at this. Five gateways in addition. And so the, the legs are about to finish with plus one. And what will happen is that, well, they're going to start walking out and the Zerg might not take them seriously, but then bam, the speed will kick in and it'll be too late. So let's see how the Zerg responds here. Five Zealot moves out. And oh, there we go. We've got speed. And not only that, we got reinforcement Zealots coming at the same time. The, the Zerg better have started to make army units here. There's no time to make drones now. It'd be way too late for that. So now here we go. Uh, speed lots rushing to the third. And Hydra's nicely uh, moved from the Gnat, is able to defend this choke, but now the Zealot's moving into the, uh, the bigger choke area. We have 
Ooh, nine zealots here. And, uh, ooh, Zurg, knowing. Oh, diverts his uh, Hydras into the corner just in time. Ooh, that could have been really bad if the uh, zealots were able to surround the fight. Nope. Uh, more Hydras coming in from the map. And a lone drone also in the fight. Corsair's doing some damage. Oh, drone. Nice with the drone drone in the midst of this fight. Takes out a lot of the zealots. Two zealots left. And this guy will be cleaned up very soon. Oh, and a sneaky DT trying to use this chaos to sneak through the net. Uh, unable to do so. I would say overall, very nice defend by the Zerg. Uh, nice usage of that drone drill. Ooh, and two Hydras being sniped. Uh, good reinforcements from the net. And now he can counter pressure the Protoss. And what, let's see what the Protoss has. Ooh, three Templar already, each with a storm. So uh, Zerg has to be very careful here. He can't really put on that much of a pressure unless he has more Hydras. And he also, ooh, oh, a decent storm. Ooh, taking out like four Hydras, ouch. Oh, that's not good. A, dot, a DT here waiting for a, a chance to sneak in there. Uh, yes, and there's only one Templar with energy. Uh, Protoss also has to be careful. He's being very aggressive with the Zealots, but uh, once the storm is out, he, he needs to respect the uh, Ooh, Scourge. Uh, Corsair almost going down. A lot of Hydras being reinforced. A lot of Hydras uh, moving around on the map. See if he can do anything against these high uh, these zealots. We got one high templar here. Ooh, and too many hydras. Nice conflict. Ooh, a decent storm, but he's gonna be losing this templar. And this is exactly what Pippo wanted. Uh, Ruin over committing there with just one templar, having to run all the way back to his net to save his zealots. Oh, and then meantime picking off Corsair. Nicely done. Oh, we got three more storms. Gotta be careful. Okay. Getting some storms. Ooh, another storm. Oh, completely whipped the storm. Still got a third one. Pitbull. Ooh, nice pickoff by uh, some fighters on the left. A nice uh, pickoff of some stray zealots there. Uh, Pitbull doing a great job splitting the army and doing damage to the stray zealots that end up splitting. Ooh, he only has one Templar now, two Templar. One of them has energy. This could be a very, uh, this is a very important moment here. If the Hydras ever pick off enough Zealots, then the game's not going to be good for the Protoss. Uh, zealots chasing after some of the Hydras. Oh, and uh, again, some stray Zealots getting picked off by Pitbull. Ooh, and Pitbull has a lot of Hydras on the left side. Ooh, a very decent storm. Ooh, and another storm. Uh, he's not going to be able to save these Templar, though. Oh, and, and a lot of skirmishes happening everywhere. Oh my goodness. And in the meantime, some more Hydras coming around the back to try to snipe some more Templar. Doesn't see any. Oh, he may trap the, the Protoss army in between. Uh, but Protoss actually has a decent number of Zealots now. And it's now the Hydras that are being pincered. Ooh, he needs to get out of here. Oh my goodness. he's All right, he makes it out. Zealots unable to... to uh, oh, and a shuttle with one DT amidst all of this fighting. Oh my goodness, Ruin with the multitask. Whew. Chasing after this army of uh, Hydras, but at the same time, dropping a DT. Oh, he sees. Uh, can can Ruin? Uh, can Pitbull move out in time? Oh, he does see it. Very fast reaction time. DT getting two kills, maybe a third. That's three kills and has to retreat for now. Oh, in the meantime, the main army of the Protoss chasing a group of Hydras. Now. But in the meantime, again, more Hydras on the side attacking the third and maybe trying to sandwich the Protoss army? Nope, decides to instead harass the third. Uh, trying to pick off some high Templar from the back, but unable to do so. Ooh, decent storm. Getting up the Hydras. Oh, and another nice storm. Oh my god. Four Hydras being storm to that. Now this was a nice diversion, but uh, the the army is coming back now, so these hydras aren't going to be able to do much. Uh, oh, in the meantime, uh, Dark Templar is back it's in the corner, uh, waiting for the right moment. Hydras unable to do much. He's he's been bleeding a lot of hydras in these skirmishes. As much as he's been doing well in splitting the army and picking off zealots, the supply difference is 43. This is a lot in a ZVP and. 
Uh, oh, and the Star Templar on the move again. Oh, and nice reaction time by Pitbull. How many kills is this going to get? Four? Five? Ooh, and takes out Ooh, And in the meantime, oh, there's a, there's a skirmish. Oh my god, unable to see the Hydras being stormed. Unable to move them out. Oh my goodness, this was a very bad trade for the Zurich. Uh, Zurich Hydra count to win them as we speak. And, and uh, uh, Protoss is going to soon run away with this eco. Uh, well saturated on both the, both bases. About to get his third up. Uh, has, let's see. Wow. Nine gateways. A lot of gateways. And uh, he already has 2-0 with Dragoon tech. So I, I really want to see uh, Pitbull with some lurkers here. I think the Hydra only uh, strategy... Worked until he just lost a few too many, and now he's sort of stuck on Hydras, and I don't see any Lurkers. Uh, this could be, um, at some point, this ball is going to be impossible to stop with just Hydras. He's going to have to play the Gorilla Warfare of his lifetime in this game now. Nice concave on the Hydras, looking very menacing. You don't want to attack into this right now. Oh, and but he does, he's got some storms here. Uh, let's see. He doesn't find a chance to get them. Protoss uh, moving uh, its death ball into the right, or sorry, into the left and into the uh, one of the bases of the Zerg. Um, and Zerg once again creating a diversion by attacking the third, forcing the entire Protoss army to come back and picking off stray. Ooh, a huge storm! Oh my goodness! And Tiger's getting caught between the two armies. Ooh. I feel like the Protoss is just outmaneuvering the Zerg right now. Pitbull trying his best to create diversions and pick off stray units here and there, but Protoss just on top of it with good reaction times. Supply difference at 60. Looking very dire for the Zerg now. Ooh. He needs to pick off all Templars if he wants to win this game. Supply difference is getting very, very large. Oh, and still, oh, and a very nice storm getting five or six hydras. There's not many hydras left here. I don't see this. This looks like it's gonna be game very soon. Zerg, no lurkers, and only a handful of hydras. Storm taking out the remaining couple. Oh, and even a drone mine storm taking out the few drones that he has. Oh, Archon in the in the net. This is this is too much to come back from. Zealots streaming in. Reinforcement hydras storm to death. And GG by Pitbull. Whew. So very well played again by by Ruin. Very successfully fending off the attacks from Pitbull, and is a hydra mate, hydra based army. Ruin is now up 2-0 going into the third match. And we move into the third game. This game is on Blue Storm. Blue Storm being a very popular map as well. Back in the day. Uh, I don't believe it's played as often nowadays. Uh, it's a two-player map. Um, and one characteristic of the map is that it is a very, very wide net. So it's hard for Protoss to prevent any sort of Ling run by. So I'm curious to see if Pitbull opens with like a speed Ling, you know, fast speed Ling opening, try to get some Lings passed, or if he's just going to play a, lot, a little more standard uh, macro game. But yeah, Ruin showcasing his uh, decisiveness and his uh, battle mechanics in the last two games. You know, I was really impressed by the way that he was just able to utilize his zealots so effectively. And, you know, I think Pitbull did a great job of just darting his hydras back and forth and picking off stray zealots here and there. But I think Ruin just saw through that and was able to, you know, effectively dispatch threats and harassments and just ultimately build up a uh, enough of a, an army to just uh, just crush Pitbull at the end. So, yeah, I'm... I'm looking forward to what he does in this game. This uh, this map is uh, is very interesting in that there's a little uh, tiny little alleyway here that connects your net to the um, other side, but only one unit can pass through, and only small units can pass through. So it's easy to defend, but you have to be aware that it's there. 
uh, overpool opening for the Zerg. <laughs> Lots of probes being queued up here. Looks like it's going to be a forge uh, fast expand. Probe getting a very nice scout off. Sees the overlord, sees the overpool. And he's going to be able to prevent this hatchery from going down again. And let's see how long it takes this time. Probe running away. Ooh, ooh, getting a, a few shots from the drone here. Ooh, very nicely, uh, very nice drone micro by Pitbull. Bringing down the health of Ruin quite a bit now. Probe might actually die if he just stays for too long. Drone doing a very good job. Oh, and he gets the hatchery down. So not too bad, and a probe is almost dead, so that could also, that could help in in cutting the scout later on. And two lings are out, and two drones. And at the same time, ruin with only one cannon. So you can see that there's this space that's undefended by the cannon. So uh, I'd like to see Pitbull sort of send a, a bunch of lings here and kind of harass the probes that end up in this uh, mineral patch. Putting down a sec uh, gateway here. Now the Zerg has two options for a third. He can either put it here, but it's a min only, or he can put it where Pitbull is about to put it, which is a gas base. I think this is the more standard third hatch replacement. And in the meantime, very standard gas timing. I started it at around 2.30. And in the meantime, trying to cut off the scout, but unable to do so, it's, it's pretty tough to do with just two lings. Protoss also playing very standard, uh, getting a Nexus now, and a uh, Gateway almost done. And we'll see if he opts to do sort of a Hydra Den again, but nope, it looks like he builds his Lair now. Lair and then Speed, most likely. Uh, Protoss doesn't know that there's a, th there's a base at 5, but I think he knows, or he assumes that there is. Uh, it's it's the most common placement for it anyway, so. Probe, ooh, making its way past the, the Zergling here. He's going to get a full scout of the main of the Zerg, which is very big. He sees that it's a lair. He sees that there's no Hydra Den. You know, so he can expect a Spire follow-up to this. Cybernetics Core almost finished. Let's see how, how much, how long he can keep this probe alive. Probe getting as much information as it needs, just... Chilling and regenning its shields. It doesn't have a worry and it's in the world. Zerg, okay, hatching a few more lings. Pro perfectly in time to see that. Now the now Ruin has to think about what Pitbull is trying to do, which is most likely to get some lings through this choke and then harass the probes here, so. Uh, he might need another cannon here. We'll see how he deals with it. It seems like he feels confident enough where he doesn't need an extra cannon. Maybe he thinks that he can just dispatch his zealots there, but yeah, we'll see how this, this works out for him here. Uh, getting Corsairs, plus one damage. Oh, and the pro finally checking out five o'clock knows that there's a third over there. Oh, and Ling's running past and taking some probes. Exactly what, what uh, I suspected that they would do. Oh, does he get another one? Nope. I believe he has, he's, he's able to get two probes. A zealot's being dispatched. Ooh, Bo's losing a lot of mining time. Oh, in the process, Zealot's attacking the links. Ooh, he's gonna fall. Oh, can he get it? No. Pippo unable to finish off the two Zealots, but they're very badly injured. Ruin, uh, in the end, I think he can feel pretty good about that. Uh, he did lose two probes, but... Uh, Saved his zealots and didn't have to build an extra cannon here. Zerg making a spire, so this will be a pretty standard uh, five hatch hydra opening, it seems. Fifth hatchery there. Protoss going to build a citadel. Uh, plus one on the way for the zealots. I'm moving out, poking. But decides to come back. It's a wise choice. We see a den. And Scourge, I believe. There we go. Scourge. And an Evo Chamber. So very standard five hat opening. Uh, Zealots being uh, poking out again. Apply some pressure. Uh, does that force the Zerg to make any more Sunkins? Nope. No Sunkins. 
and I don't see speed being researched here, so what this means is that the Zealots won't really be able to do any damage anytime soon, and anything else uh, would be a bluff, essentially. Uh, Zurich doesn't know this yet, but uh, it's upgrading Hydra speed, making some drones, making some Hydras, uh, Ruin adding a cannon here to prevent any more sort of Ling shenanigans. Ooh, okay. Alright, yeah, he was getting the amulet upgrade, but yeah, you need the storm first for sure. Uh, Protoss starting the storm upgrade. And he's gonna be... His push out is gonna be a lot later than than usual because he has not started uh, speed lots yet. Ooh, and two Corsair chilling out without the cannon, able to snipe a, a Corsair. But at the same time, uh, Ruin canceling the... The, the cannon that was there. I think he, he intends to no longer build any Corsairs. Interesting. I wonder uh, what made him do that. He only has three. A Muta tech switch would definitely be possible. And six Zealots, once again. Uh, a bluff. Uh, walking out just to see what's going on outside the base. Having to come back because no speed. Just started speed. Uh, Zerg. Getting well saturation on his main and his gnat. Uh, needs a few more drones at his third, but he has plenty of hydras for any sort of defense. Ooh, and we got lurker upgrade. Interesting. So this lurker upgrade is happening before range upgrade, which means that I think Pitbull is going to try to do some lurker contain, which is very good on this map because you can see that there's a ramp leading into the gnat. So you can lurker contain from above the ramp. And the other entrance, or the exit rather, is just a tiny little uh, alleyway. So you can definitely just hold this with a few lurkers. So I like this opening. Oh, he has some uh, hydras hiding here so that you can, the Protoss doesn't know that it's going to be lurkers. So very, uh, very nice placement here. But uh, I feel like the Protoss would also suspect something too. Uh, you know, all these circlings. Zalot's moving out. Potentially trying to see if there's any uh, lurker eggs morphing above his base, but they're not here. Zealots moving around, trying to figure out uh, where the lurkers may be. I think he does suspect something for sure. A Dark Templar trying to poke uh, at the gnat to see what's going on. Doesn't see anything. Finally gets speed, speed, speed lots. Ooh, and just misses the lurkers. Oh, I think he saw a glimpse of it. I don't know if he actually was looking at the screen or paying attention, but... Ooh, I see interesting. A Dark Archon with Maelstrom. So I think he decided to stop Corsair production because he wanted to end up getting uh, Dark Archons anyway. So interesting strategic boy, uh, choice here. Um, oh, and he's... Oh, does he suspect a drop? Very interesting. Conan, cannons at his main. Cannons at his net. Yeah, this, he's definitely suspecting a drop at this point. Uh, but we, we know that he's actually just trying to do a lurker contain. DT seeing some hydras come from his uh, third base. And uh, stop lurkers here. <laughs> Not giving away the location of his lurkers here. Very smart. Uh, these five zealots, they're going to have to run back. Oh, are they actually going to be used offensively here? Interesting decision by Ruin. Sending his five zealots... Diverting them to the, f the third of the Zerg. And in the meantime, Zerg about to set up a, uh, a, ca a contain right above the Protoss net. He sees, he sees the uh, Zealots at his fifth, at his third. Ooh, and there's three Hydras and a Sunk and a bunch of drones. There. Can he block? It's a 2-0 two -oh, uh, two -oh upgrades on the Zealots here. Uh, he should be able to drone drill and, and prevent too much damage, but let's see how this happens. Okay, turning into Lurkers, prevent them from being killed. Very nice. Alright, uh, he's taking some drone losses, so that's one drone, two drones lost, three drones. Oh, Hydras are going down. Oh, extra Zealots, reinforcing. Drone drill, try to block the Zealots. Sunken Colony's going down. And this will be cleaned up with not too much more losses, but uh, Zerg definitely having to pull back his entire army just in case, buying some time for the Protoss. Uh, unable to set up a Lurker contain directly above the ramp. Uh, this is an interesting decision. I 
Oops. I wonder why he didn't position them right above the net. Because the problem with this contain is that there's a side alleyway that you're not covering. So I'm a little bit confused. Maybe he thought he didn't have time. Which might be true. But, ooh, Lurker being taken out. Ooh, not, not efficient trade there. Uh, but this Lurker contain is looking pretty strong. A good number of Lurkers. Supply Pitbull almost as close as the Protoss, which means that he's in a decent position, macro-wise. Oh, and the Protoss uh, building a pylon, potentially to start a third, but he knows that there's a bunch of lurkers on top. So, and, and this is why I was questioning his initial placement, because he can, Protoss can just basically go all the way around the map and avoid all of these lurkers. And, oh my goodness, okay, he goes around, and he's going to travel up this tight uh, ramp here. Dark Archon. Oh, uh, not such a good Maelstrom. Only two Hydras in my pocket. But he was able to run away from the entire Lurker field and attack in here. Oh, and a, uh, a little bit more of a decent Maelstrom. Uh, has to avoid getting spine killed. Oh, it's a stray Zealous getting picked off. Uh, Protoss. Uh, I wonder if he's going to be going into the Nat of the Zerg. Oh, it's a lot of lurkers. A lot of lurkers here. Oh, nope. The Protoss backs out. In Oh, I think he's engaging the lurker field instead. From both sides. Engaging from the bottom and the top. Storm's going down. Lurker's being stormed. Oh, the Observer being cut by the Zerg. Oh, amazing timing on the Observer cut. Oh my god. All of these army units are being scraped up by the lurker field. Without any Observer. The Storm's destroying all the hiders on the right side. But oh my god, the entire army on the left side getting destroyed by Lurkers without observers. And a few, uh, about 10, 9 Dragoons left here, but oh my god, an incoming flood of Hydras. And still no observer on the left side. The Dragoons being caught between Lurkers and some Hydras. All getting destroyed. Oh my goodness, wow, Pitbull with a decisive victory. We'll take the third game. GG. The score is now 2-1. Ruin is still up. And now for our fourth game on Circuit Breakers. Um, Circuit Breakers, another very popular map, uh, very macro-oriented map, four-player map. Uh, we have our Zerg player, Pitbull, at five, and our Protoss player, Ruin, at seven. And uh, yeah, what a game. Uh, Ruin uh, had a good amount of, uh, he was able to sidestep the Lurker field, and I think he had a good idea in trying to engage the field from both sides, but the amazing Observer cut by Pitbull just, oof just destroyed Ruin's Dragoons, in, uh, the reinforcing Dragoons, and just sealed the game for him instantly. So really well played by Pitbull. Uh, so we'll see what, uh, what opening he chooses to go for in this game. Ruin, uh, I suspect that he may uh, again go for a gateway first opening. Uh, oh, and he chooses to, to do a, a probe uh, pylon search. Uh, means likely that he's not going to be building a gateway. Uh, Zerg uh, is definitely going to get harassed here. It's, even if he does do a 11 pull or 11 hatch, he's not going to be able to put down his hatchery. Uh, but it looks like he's going to go over pull, so that's that's fine for him. No need to put down a hatchery just yet. Uh, and Protoss, yes, certainly it looks like he's going to be building a, a forge into an expand. Protoss seeing the spawning pool. He's going to try to get some harass off now. Uh, preventing or stealing some money. Take away this mineral field from being, uh, from being mined. <laughs> Pitbull, <laughs> unable to mine from this patch. It's the small little annoyances. And probe. Ooh, nice uh, moving micro by, uh, by Pitbull. Able to cut down the probe. 
Will he be able to place the hatchery, though? Yes, he is. Very well done by Pitbull. Barely any time lost in that one. Uh, Protoss taking down, uh, putting down a forge and now a nexus. And putting down a cannon afterwards. Uh, there's enough space here in this map for him to be able to do this. So he's not really at risk of, uh, of, of a Ling run by here. Zerg uh, made a pair of Lings. Rest, drone, rest being drones. It's going to use one Ling to chase the probe and one Ling to to scout and see uh, the gateway and see if any zealots are going to move out. So, yeah, pretty standard opening from both both players. Pitbull opting to get the third hatchery at the three o'clock gas expansion. No gas yet. This is actually fairly late for a uh, for a gas here. Uh, he might be thinking of doing a hydra den opening. Typically, you want a little more minerals for that. But you know the probe is looking at everything, so the probe knows as well. Um, in the meantime. Uh, Zerg, for some reason, uh, getting too close to the cannon, loses his Ling. It's actually kind of a big deal because you can't... You need to chase this probe, so you're going to have to build an extra two Lings to be able to scout here. So, not an auspicious start for the Zerg player, but let's see what he does with this slightly late gas. Probe still uh, scouting and seeing everything. Oh, he's going to lose it! Oh, he loses the probe! Oh my goodness! Terrible timing to lose the probe. And indeed, Pitbull with the Hydra done. Almost like clockwork, right after the, the probe dis is destroyed. And there's no Zealot here either, so uh, he's not going to be able to get a scout out anytime soon. Okay, Zerg sees that uh, there's a new probe leaving the base. Uh, I kind of I feel like this is going to be a 973-ish macro uh, den opening, so it's not... It doesn't look like it's going to be an all-in. He's still building drones. Uh, these are lings. Okay. Another drone. Uh, this one ling is not going to be able to stop this probe. Let's see. Oh, oh, moving around. Oh, very nice. Got a, got a few extra hits off there, but unable to uh, prevent them. So Ruin sees this Hydra done now. Uh, he knows that it's a Hydra opening. He saw the lings coming out. So I feel that he should probably put down maybe, uh, you know, extra cannon right now. And then uh, based on what he sees, maybe some more cannons. Um, but he's putting down a pylon. Okay. No extra cannons yet. Interesting choice. Uh, he has a zealot uh, out on the map. Sees the lings. Um, that's very odd. I would expect him to build at least one cannon immediately. But... He, he is not so far. This is Hydra. Speed is now done. Uh, drone counts 963. So essentially 973. And I see Zealots moving out on the map. So is this plan to just delay the Hydras with the Zealots? And then that buys him time to get this, uh, get the cannons up? But no, he's actually returning with the Zealot. He's not even uh, using them offensively at all. Uh, he might be trying to sneak this guy in after uh, Hydras move out. But yeah, this guy is not going to see... This guy is not going to delay the Hydras at all. And oh my goodness, just one cannon being morphed. But we have... Let's see. Oh my goodness, six, six Hydras. Oh my, six Hydras can easily snipe this cannon. I know, like, the range isn't upgraded. So he's going to try to take out this gateway first. Oh my goodness, there's no other gateway. Uh, oh, nice overlord. Snipe there. Uh, nice, ooh, bad rally on the zealot. He's gonna lose his gateway any time now. He needs another gateway. If he loses his gateway, he's no more zealots. Oh my goodness. He starts another gateway. Oh my god. Hydra's going in. Takes out the first cannon. Takes out the second. Oh, and immediately takes out the third. Oh my god, this game looks over. Only one cannon and two zealots with no gateway. Oh my god, probes come out, but futile gets all taken out by Hydras. There's links for the win. Oh, and GG. The, fast, the fastest game in the series so far. <laughs> oh my goodness. <sighs> wow. And now the series is tied two to two. And now we go to the final game of the best of five. 
on Fighting Spirit. Another very popular map. Uh, it's, to some, probably, you know, the definition of a macro standard map. Uh, Ruin starting at 7 o'clock is our Protoss. And Pitbull, our Zerg, is starting at 5 o'clock. And yeah, last game was a little bit interesting. I, I'm not sure why Ruin decided not to build cannons earlier. He clearly saw the den, and he clearly saw Lings being produced, but he chose not to build any cannons and in, instead uh, was punished for losing uh, by losing his gateway and then just getting run over by Hydra. So uh, good, uh, good timing attack by Pitbull. Uh, a little bit unfortunate uh, cannon timing for Ruin. But this is the deciding match, the fifth match. Overlord is scouting into the in the correct direction. It looks like Ruin gonna open gateway first again, and I would, you know, not surprised. Ruin has been showing fantastic decision making and battle micro, and just effectiveness with zealots. So, yeah, zealot first, gateway first, sounds like a good idea to me. Uh, Pitbull, uh, we've seen him go. Okay, so no pool. So it looks like it's going to be another 11 hatch. Yep. Two drones being morphed. Ooh, and uh, Ruin uh, taking a detour, checking out the, the Overlord coming in. So he knows that the Zerg is at 5 o'clock for sure. And Zerg, once again, with the 11 hatch, the timing works out so that you can put down a hatchery without any harassment from a gate first uh, probe scout. So that's worked out for him. Let's see if Ruin can prevent Pitbull from pu putting down a hatchery or a spawning pool once again. Probe. Harassing. Putting down a. Oh, prevents the pool. Oh, this guy. Oh, what? Uh, he needs a pool. He needs a pool right now. There we go. There we go. And Probe being annoying. Oh, don't want to lose this drone. 15 HP. 10. 6. Two more hits. You don't want to be losing a drone at this point in the game. Ooh, nice block by the drone there. Probe also took some damage there. First Zealot just being morphed. It's going to walk over and try to do some harass and take out some drones here. Probe still looking around for that injured drone, unable to find it. Protoss starting a Nexus here. No more Zealots for the Protoss. So that's it. One Zealot, one Probe. See how much damage he can do with this. So far, uh, this this drone uh, still not dead. Nice. Fairly early gas. Uh, oh, and the zealot walking into the drone line here. It's very important for the the desert to not take that much damage. Ooh. Let's see, can he escape here? Oh, two hits. Oh, picked off. The drone that was injured from earlier, very nicely done. Ooh, a second kill. Ooh, second drone. Oh, third drone, loses the probe. And just about to lose the Zealot, but three drones, wow. Three drones with the Zealot, that's very, very good. I think Ruin should feel pretty happy about this outcome. Zerg with only 10 drones, and <laughs> Not enough money for a, a third hatchery. I, I'm, I'm curious as to what his plan is here. He still has his drone on gas. Looks like he's gonna get, get speed. Yeah, he's getting speed, uh, but he still has drones on gas. So that means that he doesn't want a third hatchery. Oh, but he doesn't want a probe to see that. So he's he needs to make sure the probe never sees three o'clock. Because three o'clock is where you would have put a third hatchery, which he hasn't. So he wants to make sure that the probe does not see it. Uh, Protoss, otherwise a, a regular opening. S uh, cybernetics core going up. <laughs> yes, and Zerg with the layer. Uh, we're gonna see if he makes a den or a spire, but this layer timing isn't that fast. He went speed first and he took a little harass though. So this this timing is not gonna be that much of a surprise for for Ruin here. So I'm, I'm wondering what, what his plan is here. Uh, Probe frantically searching to see if there's a third. Doesn't see anything. Uh, this wall of lings is going to be enough to stop the probe. And speed will be done very soon, so uh, no more scouting for the Protoss. Protoss with three zealots. Uh, he should move out with these zealots just for scouting purposes very soon. 
He needs to know what the Zerg is doing. Uh, he cuts the probe, so no more probes for scouting. And it looks like it's going to be a Spire because he should have built the den if it was going to be Lurker. And the Spire goes down. And uh, yeah, once again, uh, four Zealots now. Let's see what he does. Okay, adds a cannon for defense and sends them out for scouting. Ooh, and in the meantime, Zerglings taking a detour and moving down. Oh my god. Protoss doesn't see this. Oh, now he does. Zerglings. Oh, running past. Oh, he sees Probe's being in front. Oh, he takes one out. Oh, with a ram. Nice, nice probe drill. Takes another probe out. Third probe out. Oh, maybe a fourth. Nope. Five speedlings. Oh, boy. This is gonna... This could do a lot of damage. Ooh, nice probe drill there. Lings going behind the minerals. Oh, no. Gets stuck. Oh, this is a tight wall. The Lynx get stuck behind the minerals. Oh my goodness, very good Sim City by the Protoss. Uh, this one drone, uh, one Lynx is unlikely to do much here. So very well done. Oh, and a Scouting Zealot at the same time. Oh my, he's he's gonna see everything. He's gonna see. Oh, can he get into the main? Oh, a little unfortunate. Unable to block the the Zealot from going to the main sees the spire and sees the saved larva so he knows it's mutas. Tries to get a drone, probably won't succeed. Uh, four zealots here now uh, wondering what they should do. Uh, they seem to be trying to pressure the zerg but the zerg is already building a sunken colony here so unlikely to take damage here. Uh, the third hatchery is vulnerable but uh, will the zealots go up there to harass? We'll see. Zealots taking a look at the sunken immediately turns around. In the meantime, Yura's just popped. Maybe the sunken wasn't necessary, but in any case, Yura's popped. Oh, did they miss? Oh, I think they missed the zealots here. Going straight for the gnat. But the zealots, oh, and they see the zealots attacking the hatchery. He does not want to lose this hatchery right now. Five zealots hitting away at the hatchery. Oh my goodness, that is going down fast. Half HP now. Zerglings and Yura's practically trying to stop the zealots from killing the hatchery. Zealots, oh, a little bit ambivalent, taking out the links, oh my god, the hatch rate is so low, 104, 76, 49, oh, 35, 20, oh my goodness, 15 HP, Whew, that is so close, and immediately uh, morphing into a lair, and uh, Pitbull can't be feeling good about this, he needs to harass with this Muta, and he needs to force some more cannons, he needs to force some more Corsair, but you know he's just he's babysitting this almost dead hatchery with his 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 muta group so you know not a good situation for the zerg right now uh he's droning up i believe he's trying to transition into hydras he didn't upgrade uh, air carapace he's not making any more mutas uh, so it looks like he's just doing into uh, going into a uh, five hat hydra in the meantime zerg uh, protoss getting a dark templar uh, trying to probably snipe off that hatchery. We'll see if he succeeds. But we know that the lair is about to be finished morphing, so uh, this Dark Templar is not going to be able to do it. And even getting a sunken just to uh, make sure that it doesn't get killed. A Hydra Den on the way, uh, Evo Chamber on the way, and a good amount of drones. Uh, he's going to need a little bit more to fully saturate all three bases, but he's uh, getting back into the macro mode. And here we go, the Lone Dark Templar, uh, whose job it is to, uh, un oh, and at the same time, Muta is coming in to harass the probe, but he doesn't see the Corsairs. Oh my god, the Corsairs are going to keep, oh my goodness, finally sees it, but the Corsairs are ripping into the Mutas. Oh, and somehow avoids the Corsairs. Oh my god, look at this micro, what the, how is he able to do that? How is he able to do that? Oh my god, destroys most of the Mutas, deeply injured. Oh my goodness, the Mutas are essentially worthless now. And uh, five, five Corsairs with plus one. Ooh, it's gonna be hit by the Scourge though. Oh, it connects, but nothing goes down. Corsairs sees the Hydra's popping, takes out a Muta. Oh, in the meantime, it looks like the DT failed to do anything uh, to the lair. Six Corsairs out with plus one. Uh, oh, and a bunch of Scourge, actually. 
he he built a few more scourge. Will it connect? Ooh, the scourge. Oh, the corsairs are caught in the wrong side of the map. They're gonna have to play a a dodge game here. Uh, can they make it? Oof, very close here. Oh, they need to. Oh, oh, two connect. Five corsairs left. Ooh, another one, and another one, but no deaths. No additional deaths of the Corsairs. Uh, five speed lots uh, looking to pressure, but I don't think they'll be able to accomplish anything here. I'll just get some scouting information. Nice pick off on the Hydralisk there. Pros with uh, six gateways, uh, with four Templars building energy. Uh, these guys are going to be a huge threat for the Zerg later in the game. Robotics facility going up. Speedlots still roaming the map, applying some pressure, getting some scouting information. Oh, and look at this. Uh, this is one, two, three, four, eight gateways with seemingly no intent to take a third. So this is going to be some sort of a 2-0 timing push. And, uh, and the Zerg needs to really be prepared for this. Uh, I believe uh, nice pressure with the Hydras, forcing the Zealots back home. Uh, Hydra. Uh, I believe the Hydras need to be morphed into Lurkers in order to block this kind of push. Because he's also upgrading uh, Goon range at the moment. So, oh, and a ninth gateway before the third. Ooh, and an uh, inefficient battle for the Protoss here. But yeah, this is nine gateways. Nine gateways with 2 0 about to be done with Goon upgrades and production of Goons. So the Protoss really has no intention of taking a third anytime soon. Uh, the Zerus taking a scout here. Ooh, dodging some storms. Ooh, took some damage though. Um, but a Zerg is trying to prevent a third, but the Protoss doesn't want a third. The Protoss just wants to move out and end the game very soon. Uh, so the Zerg, let's see. Uh, lurker aspect being researched. Oof, I don't know. This is... I'm not sure if this is going to complete in time. I mean, there's a decently sized Goon Temp Zealot army right now. And... Plus two attack is about to be finished. Uh, probe coming out. I think he's going to start the Nexus just as uh, the Protoss moves out. And in the meantime, Hydra's moving around the map, uh, maintaining some map control, uh, preventing this uh, third from coming out. He sees the probe. Okay, nice pick off. Nice, uh, nice pick off of the pylon and the probe. Uh, but he needs to realize that this is a nine gate two zero push. And the 2-0 the is almost done here. And this is a lot of goons here. Uh, he's going to need more than just hydras against this army. Okay, Lurker Aspect just finishes. He needs to morph these guys immediately. He needs to morph these guys as soon as he can. Uh, okay, so the 2-0 is done. Protoss is moving out now. And Zerg has to gather all his forces. Uh, hydras in the front. Uh, doing some harass. Okay, hydras on the, on the side. Uh, a flank attack. Good idea. Ooh, and a, and a storm gets some of them. Oh, a lot of damage being done to these Hydras. Oh, it's a small, it's a very paltry number of Hydras. Uh, and picking off some stray zealots, which is a good idea, but oh, where are your lurkers? Oh my goodness. Oh no. Oh no. Hydras on their own. Oh my goodness, no. Oh my goodness, this, these lurkers are gonna pop. These workers aren't going to be ready. No, oh, nice storm. And another nice storm. Taking out, oh my god, a ton of hydras. Oh my god, and these workers are in a terrible situation. Ooh, storm destroying all the workers. Oh no. Oh no, purple. All workers destroyed, and only hydras against the Goon Temp army. Oh, 50 supply behind. I don't see this. I don't see him coming back here. He just doesn't have. He doesn't have enough hydras. He has no lurkers. It's just uh, it's too well push. Just perfectly timed and very, very well decided. Uh, very well done by the Protoss here. Uh, taking a third, but doesn't really want to. Ooh, and, uh, storm at the ramp, killing six hydras. Oh, this is uh, yeah, nothing left for Pitbull. Morphin Hydra's getting, getting killed. A ton of goons at the net, just killing everything. Uh, reinforcements coming in, but it's a little too late. Yeah, a little too late. Zealot's screaming in. And GG. 
Oh, what a way to lose though. Oh, those poor lurkers. Oh, very well played by Ruin. Um, I really liked his uh, army movements in this uh, series and his decisive zealot movements and uh, general mechanics in fighting and uh, macro. So yeah, very well played by Ruin. Um, I saw some very good hybrid movements by Pitbull as well, uh, but wasn't able to close out the series. Uh, so yeah, that was it for the best of five between Ruin and Pitbull. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.